Okay, to do a follow-up video on my pan adapter restoration, I'm going to uh, uh, align it and, uh, well, trace a signal through it, make sure the RF chain is working, and uh, align it. But in order to do that, I need an oscilloscope. I have some other Heathkit test gear. I've got a RF generator down here. But I don't have a working oscilloscope. What I have here is my dad's old Heathkit. Uh, let me see the model number. IO-4555 single trace oscilloscope. It sat on a shelf in his basement for many years unused and uh, when I first powered it up it came up seemed to have kind of a gentle sinusoidal sort of pattern on the trace that then settled out and went away after about 10 seconds. Caught my eye though but after about uh, two minutes I began to smell something burning and a little bit of white smoke started wafting out of the back of it. So I shut it off. I've opened it up and visually looked and uh, I found some uh, resistors that looked like they got a little hot but no obvious signs of what was burning. So today I'm going to open it up and I'm going to uh, take the time with the schematic and start poking through it and see if I can figure out uh, why why it wanted to smoke because I need it. I need it to finish that pan adapter. So we'll open her up and uh, we'll have a look-see. So inside of here I'm looking at the uh, at one of the power supply boards and I noticed right away these two uh, two watt resistors focus you silly thing back up Camcorder's not going to focus too well. I don't know if you can tell. But there's a little blistering, little bubbliness to the surface here. These 2 watt resistors, 100 ohm 2 watt resistors, got a little, little hot. So I'm going to have to look at the schematic. But I have a suspicion. Right here, we have a high voltage can filter cap which with the proximity of the connecting wires yeah I think I'll get into the schematic and find that uh, through the circuitry these resistors are upstream of this capacitor and I'll bet you this guy's leaky putting a little bit extra uh, load uh, on the power supply on these guys and uh, got them a little hot I'll bet you that's what started the smoke right there I've already tested them they're within tolerance they're actually right at about 100 ohms 101 ohms so uh, I think they're still okay they're pretty, they're pretty beefy, these 2 watt resistors, these carbon resistors. You can get them pretty hot and still not kill them. So, that's where I'm going to look first. I'm going to take a look at this guy. Figure out what he is in the schematic, where he's at, and see if I've got something I can substitute into replace. Because he is on... Heathkit labels these things pretty well on the boards. Okay, I don't know about that one. Uh, this is the 150 volt supply here, and this is the 170 volt supply that this cap is filtering through these resistors. So, that's my suspicion. It's going to be this guy. That's where we'll go first. We'll replace him and then see what happens. Well, I really wish I had a high voltage leakage tester. I really do. <sighs> my ESR meter, checking this can, each of the three caps, I'm seeing uh, almost uh, zero ESR on one, just under one ohm on the other two, which should be good. I found in my box an exact replacement, probably from the same kit from years ago, because my dad has boxes and boxes of Heathkit surplus parts, but it's an exact replacement, 100 microfarad at 300, 100 microfarad at 300, and 300 microfarad at 175. And checking it with the ESR meter, I see identical readings. Put an ohm meter on it just for grins and giggles after I uh, took this out of circuit, lifted the wires. And, uh, you know, 3.3 .3 mega ohms, 4.6 mega ohms or so. Just like you'd expect to see on a capacitor, you know, really, really high forward resistance or resistance and uh, slowly climbing as it charges. I mean, so, yeah. <laughs> At the uh, infinitesimally small voltages of the uh, DVM, it looks fine, but I don't have a high voltage leakage tester. 
I do have one that was never used, though, that the ESR meter says is good. I'm tempted just to go ahead and swap it out anyway. I mean, that one's got many hours on it, and it's quite old. This one has zero hours on it, even though it's just as old. Um, maybe it's uh, in better shape. I don't have any other high voltage caps. I'd really like to just replace this with modern electrolytics. There's enough room in here that I could take them right from the board to a ground tab, you know, and and uh, be done. But, uh, yeah. So I think I'm going to swap it out. I'm going to put this one in. Never used. Old, but never used. And uh, I guess I'm going to power it up and see if the smoke starts again and see if I can see where it's coming from if it does. Okay. Got the new cap in. Well, the new old cap. <laughs> soldered back in. Uh, connections are all good. I've plugged in the line cord. Uh, here we go. This is either going to be really dramatic or it's going to be okay. No noise. No pop. No hiss or sizzle. Let's see if we get a trace. Come on, baby. Give me a trace. Oh. We have a trace. No sinusoidal pattern to the trace. Well, that's good. <laughs> All right. Focus works. Turn the intensity down a little bit. Don't want to burn the tube. We got a good trace. No smoke yet. Last time that I ran it, uh, first time that I ran it, it ran for a, just a few minutes and I started to smell it and, and see a little smoke. No smoke. All right. We'll let it run for a little bit and then uh, we'll come back and see if we're good. Well, it's been on for about 10 minutes. No smoke. And the calibration pulse looks nice and clean. Nice clean square wave. Trace is working good. Occasional little tink sound from the uh, shield over the CRT heating up. <laughs> um, no smoke. The only thing that concerns me is I was measuring the voltage rails here. Don't want to get my finger too close. Um, it should be 170 and 150. And on the 170 volt side, I'm getting 183. On the 150 volt side, I'm getting 174. So that's a little high. Not like horribly high, but it is a little high. So I'm only slightly concerned about that. I, uh, uh, I'm going to try to find the manual. I've got the schematic, but I don't have the manual. I'm going to try to find the manual and see how you do high voltage adjust. There's a pot there. Tweaked it a little, made a slight difference, not a major difference. So, uh, yeah, but it's working. No smoke. Good clean trace. I think I'll try to see what I can do about investigating the... Uh, um, voltage adjust uh, but yeah we didn't have any warble to the trace like I saw with the other capacitor so I'm pretty sure that uh, this one is in better shape at least it's working alright and these uh, these resistors back here don't seem to be getting too terribly hot you know, I've got a uh, a little uh, temperature little visual temperature, uh, IR temperature checker. I'll probably bring that down here and check them. But hey, it's it's not smoking. That's the important part. <laughs> so I think that uh, aside from a couple of tweaks to do, I think that the oscilloscope is working. I can use it. So I'm going to uh, tweak it, put the case back on, and uh, try to put it to use. See if I can calibrate that pan adapter. All right. I think the scope is uh, good to go.